Hello, it is Alexis and Lillian and greetings from Berlin. We're back. So we're just subletting a place here for the first two months as usual on the hunt for a long-term place. If you have any leads, Lillian Brilliant underscore on Instagram, send the DM. Thank you. If you've been following us, then you know that we have been hosting queer retreats under the name Sapphic Circle. And if you haven't been following us, then welcome back or nice to meet you. We have hosted two retreats now and the last one being in Italy. So if you are interested, give it a follow. So we've had sort of discussion circles at both of the retreats and the topic that came up very prevalently in both of them was the topic of not feeling queer enough and how to overcome that. This was also called the queer imposter syndrome that a lot of people seem to resonate with. So it was really interesting to have these discussions and hear the different inputs and in this video what we're gonna do is we got some notes <laughs> we're gonna talk about what does it mean to not feel queer enough where exactly does this come from and what are the reasons for these feelings what is being queer enough and then we're also gonna talk about how to overcome queer imposter syndrome I have to say it feels good to be back with these <laughs> discussion so videos so Alexis, so. have you ever felt this feeling of not feeling queer enough? I would say in my earlier stages of being queer, if I went to a queer space, then I would feel like, oh, I'm not really that queer since I was with men before and I'm identifying as queer, which is an umbrella term, but you know, a lot of people are, who are like strictly like only with women are also using that term. And I felt kind of like, should I be, saying I'm queer. Has that developed at all? Like, do you still feel that sometimes or do you now feel queer enough? Yeah, I would say that I feel queer enough now. I think it's just with like practice, not practice, we practice a lot. <laughs> Immersing myself more in these queer spaces and just being like, you know what? Like, just be proud of who you are and I know myself and I know that I'm queer. I don't need a track record of like who I've been with and how queer I am because of this and this and this. So yeah, I think confidence just came with time. But at first I definitely was like, oh, this feels weird. So I was reflecting on this and I don't think I've ever felt like I'm not queer enough. And I think that's because I came out compared to some other people fairly early on, like I was still a teenager. I've pretty much only been with women and I look what people would think is stereotypically queer. I have short hair, I dress more androgynously. She's a gold star. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but, but what I feel sometimes is bisexual imposter syndrome. Like you don't feel like bisexual? Yeah, and because that is, you haven't been like dated dated a man before. It's pretty much the same thing. I feel like people they're like, okay, obviously she's queer. She's only dated women. She has short hair. Exactly. <laughs> when I tell people, oh, I'm also attracted to men, like what? They don't take me seriously. People in the queer community, this is always the response that I get. Well, often. Are you sure it's not just compulsory heterosexuality? Mm -hmm. But anyway, more on that later, because that's a, a different topic again. So what does it mean to not feel queer enough? What is queer enough? A lot of this is associated to the stereotypes around being queer that you then kind of, you know, like you have like this image and you compare yourself to it and it's like, do I fit this? Mm -hmm. And that means appearance, but it also means like characteristics and these stereotypes a lot of times come from representation. It's maybe the people that you know, but a lot of times portrayals in the media. Another one that comes to mind is just simply lack of experience. So just dating men in the past or just maybe not dating anyone and not having experience with women. So maybe you never kissed a woman before, you never had sex with a woman before. So I feel like with someone who's had all this experience and then you yourself are like, oh, like I've never done that, then automatically you kind of have this feeling of like, Am I queer? I haven't never even kissed a girl before, so how do I know? Even realizing you're queer in your 20s is still a different experience from a lot of other queer people who already knew since they were kids or teenagers. Growing up and going through high school while knowing you're queer while 
only finding out later in college or while you're working or something like that, I think those are different experiences. When people haven't had that experience, didn't really identify with that from a young age on, and then it's something new that comes into their life. Mm -hmm. As they're already an adult, I think it's this new thing and people are like oh do i really belong to this new kind of group of people that i before didn't really associate with i think also another tricky thing to navigate especially for bisexual women or pansexual women is when you've dated women in the past but maybe in the moment or at the time of conversation or moment you're with a man and then you automatically have this like shame or embarrassment when you say like oh i'm dating a guy right now and then i feel like automatically people are kind of like it's like oh bummer oh, yeah <laughs> or just like oh why like are you actually like queer mm. so presently being in a relationship that would categorize you as straight yeah because if you're walking around with your boyfriend people aren't gonna think she's queer because mm -hmm. she's in a straight relationship yeah okay so to summarize what causes people to not feel queer enough they don't look stereotypically queer, which is because of representation of queer people and stereotypes. They don't have the experience to back it up, meaning they don't have a lot of same-sex romantic or sexual experience. Being a late bloomer, so only coming to terms with their sexual ori orientation later in life as an adult. Being bisexual or pansexual, so not exclusively homosexual. And being presently in a relationship with someone of the opposite sex. Yes. Queer means that you're not heterosexual, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as you're not heterosexual, you are queer. No matter what you look like, what your experience is, you don't need a track record to show, to prove anyone that you're queer, because guess what? People assume that people are straight without being like, well, have you ever been with the opposite sex, you know? No, like a 12 year old or even an eight year old is assumed straight without any sort of experience or without ever having felt attraction to anyone. Mm -hmm. So you don't need that and you yourself know if you're queer or not. Today I had my first intensive German class and I said my partner and then she said, and if you want to say this to your boyfriend and I was like, okay, I'm not going to get into this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so she still doesn't know. No. Or like, I don't want to have this discussion in German. <laughs> okay, whoa, I thought we were done. But we still need to talk about how to overcome it. Save that for another video. <laughs> it will automatically improve so much more with diverse representation in like the media, in the general populations. Another one is to seek out inclusive spaces. So spaces where you know you are gonna be safe in them, people aren't gonna be rude to you, and where you can just genuinely talk about your feelings and what it's like being queer from your perspective, mm -hmm. like Sapphic Circle. <laughs> yeah, spaces where you know you're welcome and where you actually feel welcome and where you don't feel challenged in your queerness. The last one is so much easier said than done, but own it, you know? You're queer, it doesn't matter how many women you've been with or how many you haven't been with and if you've been with men in the past. If you know, you know. I think another thing to kind of like think about, especially if people feel like they need to attack you, about your queerness or you're not queer enough is like maybe they've gone through something that's their own personal issues that is making them feel this anger towards someone who might not be queer enough in their eyes so just try to not take it personally the last thing that we wanted to talk about well that i wanted to talk about was my experience as a bisexual imposter <laughs> i guess i already discussed it but yeah let's hear it isn't it interesting I feel like people don't take me seriously. Mm. And that even makes me question myself when I say, well, you know, I am attracted to certain men and I figured out I'm not romantically attracted to men, mm. but I am sexually attracted to certain men, you know? They gotta be real lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's like, people kind of make me feel like, oh, but like, that's nothing. Yeah. When it's like, but if a woman feels sexually attracted to another woman, then she's like, oh, I think I'm queer. And then is that not kind of the same thing, you yeah. know? So then when I tell people again, especially in the queer community, then it's like, oh, that's just compulsory heterosexuality. Like that's not real. 
And I guess again, it comes down to people not understanding bisexuality. Yeah, that's it. Peace out. <laughs> anyway, we would love to hear from you. Is queer imposter syndrome or not feeling queer enough something that you struggle with? If so, how do you deal with it? And what do you think makes you feel that way? All right, we will hang up now. Millennial here. <laughs> and continue our apartment search. Tonight we're going to see Muna and Boy Genius. You know, it's gonna be a good day and I'm always happy to see Phoebe Bridgers, so. Last time I almost touched her Doc Martens and Alexis saw me go crazy. I know, everyone was like running towards her. And, and I was like... one of them. It was her first stage dive and I'm not kidding, I was this close to her boot. We hope you like this video. Click the subscribe button, follow Sapphic Circle, mwah. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.